Hey yo, it is I, DPX. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast, DPX Talks, for about an hour. I think, I think this is episode 40, which is pretty big, kind of, I guess. I don't know. I, not really treating it like it's a big deal uh, up until now. But yeah, this is episode 40. Um, yeah, uh, as you may have noticed, the, there hasn't been many episodes lately. Uh, for the past two months, the episodes have been spoiler talks for Spider-Man No Way Home and Cobra Kai Season 4, respectively. But, I, I gotta, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go. There's so, there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about here. Last, uh, yeah, it was last month after I did the Cobra Kai spoiler discussion. I, there was another thing I wanted to do. There's another episode of the podcast that I decided to do and talk about stuff. But I just wasn't feeling it. Like, halfway through the recording, I was like, oh, I don't really want to keep... I don't... I don't want to do this for another, like, hour, you know? I just wasn't feeling it. So, I just stopped it right there. So, I had, like, a review for the Scream movie, for Scream. Um, and... Like, I was planning on reviewing that on the podcast, and it never happened. So, I don't have a review for Scream. So, I guess now, I, I, I guess I could say, that movie was pretty good. So I saw it, like, over a month ago now, but, uh, yeah, I was gonna review it last month, in last month's episode, but last month didn't really get a, uh, natural, normal episode, so, yeah, um, I really liked it, though, so that was, that's my quick little review for, uh, for, for Scream. As for, uh, other stuff, there are actually a, f a couple things I want to review, um, or kind of review, so, yeah, let's just get right into it, um, one thing, uh, one of the things I wanted to review, or kind of review, is Sifu. Sifu is a game that, uh, well, I bought it, and then I found out how hard it was supposed to be. I'm like, okay, let's see how well I can do this. I'm not built for Sifu. I'm not, I'm not built for this game. This game is, uh, this game will kick your ass. It kicked my ass. I, 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 never, I didn't beat it, and I realized that, like, I don't really have to beat every game I play. And when I don't beat it, it's not like a, it's a waste of money. I could totally just go back to it and try again with it. Because it's a damn good game from what I played. It really, it's re it really tested me. And, yeah, I, I, it's a great game. Um, I, I, it's a unique... So, yeah, it's also unique because of the whole aging thing. Every time you die, you age, like, a year, and then you die again, you age, like, what, three years, and then four, and five, it's, like... And then, like, and as you continue, like, the age you're at when you continue, you don't, like, go down. You, like, stay... Like, I'm 50... I think I'm, like, 50 right now. Uh, so that's very interesting, and yeah, not a whole lot to say about it unscripted. I would probably have to script it a, lot, uh, a bit better um, if I wanted to review it necessarily. But I can't review it because I didn't beat it. So yeah, that's my uh, quick thoughts on Sifu. As for other things, uh, Min Min, Steve, and Alex Amiibos have gotten some news. Min Min Ami the Min Min Amiibo got uh, dated... For April, I'm gonna actually see if I uh, I don't remember what what the exact date was if it had an exact date. Uh, Min 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 Amiibo. Um, April 29th. April 29th. While the Steve and Alex Amiibos were delayed. Now. I don't really understand why the Steve and Alex Amiibos were necessarily delayed. I mean, yeah, toys, they can take a little while, and there, there's two of them as well. They probably, it'll make the most sense to have them launch together, but they are, I thought Steve and Alex would be, like, some of the easier Amiibos to make. Hell, I thought the reason why they're also doing Alex in addition to Steve is because Steve would be, like, a very easy to make. It's like, yeah, why not make Alex? But I guess, you know, they're delaying it. Um, regardless, I'm gonna fucking get th that shit. Because a fucking Steve Amiibo, just the prospect of that, just the thought of a fucking Steve Amiibo is crazy. 
Um, I'm gonna get the Min Min Amiibo as well. I don't... Min Min is fucking... I hate Min Min in Smash. Um, she's actually fucking cringe. Um, but... Having an Amiibo of her would be pretty cool. Uh, and of course I'm also gonna get the Alex Amiibo along with Steve. It's just, I, 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 I think Steve and Alex might be like the most, Steve might be the most, uh, anticipated amiibo, if I'm gonna be honest. Not, I don't really play Steve, but it's like, a Steve amiibo. Like, th th that's something that's gonna actually exist, like, in the near future. Like, we're gonna have a Steve amiibo in our presence. Uh, I just, I hope when the Sephiroth amiibo comes out, they add the wing, and maybe, like, the, like, purple aura um pyra and mithra would be uh cool if they have like a pyra amiibo a mithra amiibo and then a pyra and mithra amiibo where they're both on the same base that's not gonna happen they're gonna do a pyra amiibo and a mithra amiibo uh kazuya of course sora dude they should do a um when they get to the sora amiibo they should do an amiibo for each all you know Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, 3, and 3D. That will be cool. So yeah, those were my quick thoughts on that. Uh, another thing that was going to be one of like the main... Uh, I don't know what happened there. Um, I was in the middle of recording, but then my uh, OBS just like froze for a second. I don't know if that froze. I will know in post. Anyways, um, if not, I'm going to sound really stupid. But, um... This was gonna be like a main topic, but oh, it um, it kind of just uh, it has died down a little bit. Last week, everyone was talking about it though, so I'm gonna talk about it now. Also, I talked about it uh, with the boys on Chota Mecast, so there's that as well. But uh, Nintendo, they are shutting down the. Uh, eShop for the Nintendo 3DS and the Wii U in 2023, and at first my reaction was kind of the same as my reaction when it was announced that Sony were shutting down the PlayStation Store for, you know, the PSP, PS Vita, and PS3. I was like, I mean, they can't keep these uh, fucking stores running forever. They can't. But at the same time, I always forget this, but there are many games on there, on these stores, that don't get re-released. So, Nintendo, like, it's way worse with Nintendo. Sony do, like, they re-release their games m way more than Nintendo does. So, so, Nintendo, like, I don't, I don't get them. You know, they'll come after you for piracy and shit. But they won't re-release your games. Their games. They won't. You know... Like, look look at the shit with Melee. Um, you know, they went after the Smash community for Slippy and everything. But, let's be real, if they re-release Melee... It would make a fuck ton of money. Like... I mean, obviously, they probably wouldn't add rollback netcode, which would be something everyone would want. But, like, regardless, uh, fucking, everyone would fucking buy it. And the same here, like, there are many games exclusive to the Wii U eShop and the 3DS eShop that, you know, what, once these eShops go away, those games are just not, they're just not going to be playable. You won't be, I mean, if you have them already, and if you've bought them already, you can re-download them. But, I mean, like, if you, they're going to be, like, you can't buy them. If you, uh, if you haven't already and they shut down. Like, I don't, I don't get Nintendo's logic here. They're like, wow, wasn't this game really good? This game was fan-fucking-tastic. We all love this game. This game is important. Oh, what's that? You want to play it? Fuck you! That's kind of what Nintendo does. So... Yeah, I don't get the... Uh, I, I mean, I do understand the these stores do have, to, do have to shut down eventually. But there'd be a lot less of a fuss about this if Nintendo had re-released some of their games. 
Um, yeah, uh, but also, I feel like there's a little bit of hypocrisy. The Wii U eShop, no one bought a fucking Wii U, and people are very vocal about, uh, how Nintendo are shutting down the Wii U eShop. And, I don't know, you, you fucking support it, and then you, you complain when they when they shut it down. The 3DS has had more support, but, oh, uh, what do you guys think about all this? Um, next, I, uh, ooh, this one's big, because this happened today. I don't really know how much I can really talk about this, because I don't really know, I don't know, it's just not something I usually talk about, but, uh, you all, you guys all know Arthur, right? Uh, the kids show, um, I remember, I have a vague memory of watching an episode of Arthur in, like, pre-K, where this is so vague, I don't even know if this actually ever happened in an episode. If 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 you if you can confirm, please let me know. But uh, comment it down below, or you yeah, comment down below if uh, this was something that happened, or if my memory is playing tricks on me, which I think is very possible. But remember one episode I watched in like pre K, where Arthur's sister was like taking a bath. A bunch of frogs were in there, and then she started running out of the bathroom with a bunch of frogs all, uh, all like all over her, and then just a bunch of other animals broke into the f house. That's like the best memory I have of watching Arthur that isn't like Arthur's fist or just a meme. Well, Arthur, uh, after what 25 years, has concluded. Yeah, that, that seemed like a show that was just never going to end. Um, but it, it did, and... I mean, I don't... That's like... That's like one of those shows that, like... Are really for kids, you know? It's not like Spongebob, where adults can enjoy it as well. Um, it's not like The Simpsons, where it's more or less an adult show, but kids can enjoy it, too. Let's not be... Let's not... Let's not be honest. Let's not lie here. My dad showed me The Simpsons when I was like a a, a, lee, a wee little lad, um, but like it was wasn't like you know butt cheeks and stuff like that. It was just it was funny. I found it really funny when I was uh, whatever. Getting off topic here, um, you know, uh, Arthur's been going on. See, twenty five years. That's like. That's like the, that's like the '90s. That's like the late '90s. This show started, and it's the uh, 2020s right now. So that's that's a decent run. And from I, when people talk about shows that overstay their welcome, I don't hear Arthur brought up too much. Obviously, the appeal for Arthur is young kids, fucking preschoolers, uh, almost. Although it's not a baby show, but you know what I mean. Like no adults are really watching Arthur. They're making memes of Arthur, but it's done. So, yeah, that's that's quite crazy to uh, just to uh, you know. So yeah, that's very interesting how they concluded Arthur after uh, after twenty five years. And what I will probably have as the screenshot that I use to talk over this uh, to talk about this topic is the last shot that I did see. With Arthur and all his friends all grown up. So, uh, I think that's cool. Uh, but what do you guys think about Arthur concluding? Anyways, I think there's one more smaller topic. This wasn't even supposed to be really like a... Necessarily a smaller topic seg segment. But, I, it kind of has turned into one of those. Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan has gotten a... Um, a thing... I forgot what I was saying. Oh, it's gotten a poster and and a release date, May 25th. Uh, I didn't really understand why. I thought it was a missed opportunity that they didn't do it on May the 4th. Because May the 4th is not only Star Wars Day, but May the 4th is on a Wednesday. Disney Plus released their shit on Wednesdays. But I get maybe the show is not ready uh, in time for May the fifth, May the fourth. Um, 
So it's in time. It's ready in time for May twenty fifth, which is the uh, some I forgot what it was, but some anniversary of a new hope. So that is also Star Wars Day, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm I'm stoked for Obi one because. Uh, this was this is a show. This is one of few shows that like people have actually been asking for. Not to not to discredit any of the other shows, uh, you know, but like many of these Star Wars spinoffs that are like in the works are more like I don't know, like Boba Fett, which turned out to be a little disappointing in my opinion. But Boba Fett and Obi Wan particularly were the two most requested Star Wars shows, or Star Wars, like, side, you know, movies, you know, spin-off movies about, like, you know, a, a specific character or something. Um, everyone has been wanting to see something about Boba Fett, and everyone's been wanting to see something about Obi-Wan. And, good to see that we're, that Obi-Wan's finally happening. I remember, like, it was two years ago now, um, where, uh, I was, I had an episode of this podcast with, uh, with Caesar my boy Caesar, and we talked about, um, how in March of 2021, Obi-Wan was, uh, set to start shooting, um, and, yeah, they're, they're getting ready to release it in, uh, May 25th, so yeah, I'm excited for Obi-Wan, anyways, we'll move on to some other topics, like, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, um, I wasn't, this isn't a review, I will have a review coming soon, a little, I guess I could talk about the game in a little bit, and also talk about some dumb fucking controversy about Aloy being ugly, I don't know why that's a fucking, what the, okay, well anyways, imagine, imagine this, imagine you're me, playing Horizon, really enjoying it, and getting a bunch of gameplay so you can review it, and then... After that, after you beat the game, all your gameplay gets fucking corrupted. That's what happened to me. All my all my footage got fu got corrupted. I I had to go roam around the post game for a little bit to so I can have footage for the game for my review. So I'm not gonna cancel a review for that. That that'll be that'll be dumb. Uh, worst comes to worst, I can use trailer footage or something. I don't want to have to do that. I like to use my own footage, but yeah, I've, I'm going to have to use, unless I want to use trailer footage, I'm going to have to use the same, you know, clip, the same 10 minute, I took two videos, one that was 10 minutes long and one that was three minutes long. And this just happened, by the way, this was like just before... You know, it's, cop it's copying over to the uh, to the flash drive as I speak. It's probably done right now, but uh, uh the, like that's that's I'm telling you, as a reviewer, that is the l most unlucky thing that can possibly happen. You know that, bro. That like burned when I fucking when that happened. I was like, oh no, I had a fuck ton of footage as well. Okay, well I'm gonna talk about the game. I don't want to go too too far in depth because I am going to make a review for it. I did finish the game and everything. I played through it. I just don't have the... I don't necessarily have the footage to show for it. So, it's gonna sound like I did not finish it. I, guys, I trust you. Or, no. Guys, trust me, I did finish it. My footage is, like, from the post-game. I hope you know. Okay? I just don't... Sometimes I'm just afraid. I don't... It's, it's not even really... I, it, it, you, you, everyone has those things that they are just a little nervous about that really don't fucking matter at all and no one else is going to suspect it, anything about it until you bring it up. Uh, and one of those things for me is like when it comes to making a review for a game, people think, oh, you didn't finish the game. How are you... How are you how, why does your opinion matter? Why are you... Like... I mean, obviously, you can have an opinion on a game halfway through, but like, you can't put your review up if you if you're only halfway through the game. And I say that I'm also kind of nervous about that because I did used to do that. I don't really know how the how reviewing games worked. If I'm going to be honest, I did used to just 
play a game for like a couple of days, regardless of whether or not I beat it, it would come as a surprise when I beat uh, when I beat a game pretty quickly, you know. Um, so, but yeah, now I just uh, I play through the entire game, and once I beat it, I review it. Uh, okay, but about the game itself, it is fantastic. I, it's my game of the year out of three games. Wow, it's only February and I played three games. Damn. Uh, and those two other games that I played this year are both fantastic. You know, um, Sifu is great, uh, and King of Fighters 15 is also great. But Horizon Forbidden West, I was going to say Horizon Forbidden Dawn, that's like combining the two games, but no, Horizon Forbidden West is fantastic. Um, you know, I, it does feel a little bit like a PS4 game because it was cross gen. And I like it doesn't feel like a full of uh, a fully like next gen experience. Although like obviously the load times are I, I at one point I just forgot that the load times are different because I've been playing on the PS5 so for ever since I got it that's been all I've been doing that in the Switch of course. But like um, yeah, it's this game is awesome. The graphics are fantastic. The uh, the Gameplay, just ru running around, and the combat is nice. One thing I didn't... This is like most PS5 games. But something I really picked up with this one... I didn't notice this. But when you... Like, there's there are certain sections in the game where you have to pry open a door with your little, like, staff thing. And you have to pu uh, push one of the shoulder buttons in order to pry it open. When, when you have to do that, the shoulder button gets, like, a little stiff, a little, uh, I don't know, what, a little hard. So you have to, like, really push on it. I mean, it's not that hard, but, like, you have to push on it with a little more, a little bit more force. But as if, like, it's, try, it's trying to, like, emulate the feel of having to pry open a door, I guess. As opposed to, um, like, and, 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 and I, I know this because I can go away from the door and I could just do that. But, like, when I'm by the door, this is me pressing on the shoulder button. When I'm by the door and trying to pry it open, you gotta, like, do that. So I think that's really fucking cool. So, yeah, that's my, uh, quick thoughts on Horizon Forbidden West after beating it. My quick, like, really, like, what's the word? Like, I just finished it. I'm, I'm, I haven't even written my review yet, right? I'm doing this episode right after I, like, I just finished the, the game. So, this is my immediate thoughts about the whole discussion over Aloy being ugly. I don't know why the fuck that's a, why is that a thing? Why, why? Look, Aloy's not... I don't think she's ugly. I mean, I'm not gonna say if she's hot or anything, but, like, she's not... I, I, I'm not gonna call her ugly. But... Why? This game, I'm telling you, that, like, this seems like a, a thing that, like, I don't... I shouldn't really be bringing up. I'm telling you, like... I was... As I was playing this game, there were... Like, many... I got a bunch of notifications about people talking, about headlines, about Aloy being ugly. It's like... Huh? This is so stupid. And I don't know what the fuck it is about uh, everyone and thinking Aloy should be like... Like, first, there's, like, the, the thing about how Aloy should be wearing more makeup in a post-apocalyptic world. Yeah, I'm sure they they got all the makeup there, right? Um, and now this, I just play the fucking game. How about that? Play the game. You know, it's not a PS5 exclusive. You don't need to pay thousands of dollars just to play this game. You can play it on your PS4, and I'm sure it runs fine on the PS4. You could uh, load times, but I like just play the fucking game. Don't worry about if Aloy is ugly. 
hot, if she wears makeup or not, or if she has a fucking third eye coming out of her nose. Who gives a shit? Play the fucking game. That's my thoughts. You know, technically, I bought this game twice, by the way. I uh, bought it from Best Buy, pre-ordered it. Then uh, the day it was supposed to come out didn't come. So I was like, all right, fine. It's probably going to come tomorrow, right? And then, like, at that night, Friday night, then uh, where like it was the day it came out, Friday night, it goes, delivering to send you this in 24 hours. I'm like, I can wait till then. I'm sure it'll be worth the wait. And then, and then... Um, I wake up the next morning, it goes, package rescheduled, you're gonna get it Thursday, almost an entire week from when you were originally supposed to get it, I'm like, fuck you, I'm getting it digitally, and I'm selling this copy to Ramkit, uh, shout out to Ramkit for accepting my offer, um, this is bullshit, I wanna rant about this for a little bit, um, before I do that, yeah, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, definitely a good game. Review uh, coming soon. All right, I want to rant about this for a little bit. I've been pre-ordering games from Best Buy. By the way, I just want to, like, a lot of people say there's no point in pre-ordering games. That's just the way I buy games, really. I never really think about it as, like, you know, pre-ordering a game, like, you're telling the publisher that you trust that they are going to deliver a good game. Right. Now... I never really... I knew that, but I never... Whenever I pre-ordered a game, it's never... Whenever I'm interested in the game, I usually pre-order it. When I'm, like... When there, when there's a game that I am pretty confident I'm gonna like, I actually pr been pre-ordering it very far in advance. Like, Horizon I pre-ordered, like, about a month ago. Excuse me. Um, Elden Ring I pre-ordered at the beginning of last month. Then some other games where, like... You know, my opinion, my excitement for it could change a bit. I wait a little bit. But, like, even, like, other games that come out in a month, like Kirby. Like, I'm stoked for that. I, I fucking pre-ordered that. And I pre-ordered it from Amazon. Because I had an Amazon card I didn't know I had. So, yeah, why not? All right. Now, that being said, I when I... I guess maybe I want to be... I, I, I don't want to wait too long. Because I like to review games. I don't get games to review. I want to make that clear. I don't get games to review them. I'm not a critic. I'm not getting paid for them. And I'm not even making money off of my review in any way. So, yeah. Um, you know, and then, and then it's, it's not every... I don't get every game. If the, if a game doesn't interest me, I don't get it. Like, Or I don't get it immediately. Like, Dying Light look, looks damn good. I haven't heard any review. I don't even know what the reception is for that game. But it looks damn good. Maybe I'll wait for that, you know. But the fact of the matter is, when I pre-order a game, I want it the day of, you know. And eh, if it, if it can't come the day of, I get it, you know. Maybe it's a like Horizon in particular was a pretty popular game. A lot of people pre-ordered it. I'm I I understand. But a week later. A week later. Are you fucking kidding me? A week later? Dude, it, like... When I, I pre-order a game, that means, like... I, it, like... Obviously... I'm gonna sound greedy, but, like, it... Uh, fucking a week later... Come on. That's ridiculous. Anyone from UPS or FedEx or USPS or anyone else... I... I mean this in the nicest way. Get your shit together. Because this is the second time in a row this has happened, by the way. I pre-ordered Battlefield 2042. Not good. Not a good game. Uh, I've My opinion's changed on it a little bit, yeah. Um, I pre-ordered that, and the same fucking thing happened. I sold it to Ramkit again. <laughs> so yeah, this is a thing I might be doing if... Uh... And the, uh, the other thing, I don't want to buy games digitally... I bought Horizon digitally on the PS5, and I bought the I pre-ordered the sixty-dollar PS4 version with the free PS5 upgrade. That's another thing. Why? It was it wasn't like this originally, but now, either you can buy the PS4 version 
for $60 with a free PS5 upgrade, or you can buy the PS5 version for $70. Even though if you buy the PS4 version, which is ten dollars cheaper, you get the you also are buying basically for PS5 owners, it's you can either pay for you pay seventy dollars or sixty dollars. What do you think? Um yeah. I just Elden Ring, I pre ordered Elden Ring like over a month ago. So if I'm gonna sound fucking greedy as shit, but if that's not here day one, or at least day two you know, if that, if it comes a fucking week later, UPS, FedEx, USPS, my dick ass, whatever, we're gonna have a problem, alright, I'm fucking, I'm really excited to play Elden Ring, and get my ass kicked, cause I couldn't handle Sifu, I, you think I'm gonna ha handle a Souls game, but fuck that, I, I wanna get my ass kicked in this, um, but yeah, uh, little, 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 right there um anyways yeah that was my little rant about these fucking like these games is not the reason i don't have i don't really have the ability to go to to go to a store and pick up a game necessarily i don't really want to explain my circumstance here i don't feel bad for me okay it's, it's just i'm just not really able to do that there aren't really many stores around me and uh yeah i it's just I would just uh, prefer to have something mailed to me. That's just how I prefer it. But, you know, maybe if it starts taking a week f to get a game that I pre-ordered, then maybe I might have to change something. I don't know. I've been on this for a bit. We're going to move on now to another thing. Uh, there's one big thing I want to talk about. Or it's kind of two big things, but I I'll, I'll save that for later. Um, there, similarly, there's... Three things in this one thing. WWE. Uh, it's currently the road to WrestleMania, and WrestleMania season's the one... It really, usually, I talk about WrestleMania season. I, I do entire episodes about WrestleMania. Um, of the longest episode of the podcast is uh, last year's WrestleMania recap. Um, it was a great WrestleMania last year, but... Um, this year, the road to WrestleMania has been a little spotty, if I do say so myself. You know. Started with the Royal Rumble. A terribly booked show. You know. The, 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 not to mention the fact that the women's Royal Rumble and the men's Royal Rumble winners were both incredibly predictable and almost seemed lazy. Like, Ronda Rousey made sense. You have her return after three years, and you have her in the Rumble. The timing lined up. You gotta have her in the Rumble, and if you have her in the Rumble, you gotta have her win. Brock Lesnar, you could you could have just not had him win. And then I heard reports that, you know, they didn't know what the fuck they were doing with the WWE champion. So, Brock Lesnar won the Royal Rumble to avoid, you know, just so they have that part done. There are many things they could have done with the WWE Champion. And then... Uh, and then... The Elimination Chamber happened. Brock Lesnar was in the Chamber match and then won the WWE Champion. Making a title versus... I... Look. That was a fucking terrible Chamber match. Alright? I don't think it's top 10 worst. You know? I don't think you gotta... You could put it there... Put it... I don't think you can really put it there with that... With the December to this member one. But... Like... De like, Brock Lesnar entered the match and buried everyone. Even well protected. Even Seth Rollins and AJ Styles have been well protected. Uh, we're just completely just jobbed out in this match. Which I didn't like. It just didn't. I don't know. Uh, I. I. Sorry about that. I wouldn't really say their momentum has been halted, but like. Brock Lesnar really did just bury, or he really did just completely squash two established main eventers, one up and comer, and one potential, uh, or no, one, one guy on the rise, and one up and comer, 
you know, if that made any sense. And the other thing is, it's kind of like a five-man elimination chamber match. But regardless, I I was just a little. I've heard report. I I follow sort of the inside inside reports of uh, of WWE and AEW, but more so WWE. Um, and I I've just been hearing a lot that they want to make uh, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at this year's WrestleMania. Huge, because this is not the first time they've uh, fought each other. It's not the first time they've fought each other at Wrestle. This is the third time they're main eventing WrestleMania against each other. But um, but like they want it to be huge, so their way of doing that is making a title versus title. Now that's all well and good, but like that's not the only fucking way you can make this a big match. Are you fucking kidding me? That that's what. Like, I'm. Mean, don't get me wrong. It's intriguing now, specifically what they're gonna do after that. You know, I think they want to have Roman Reigns walk out holding both belts. That would be a nice image. Brock Lesnar doesn't really need that. It's more. I'd say Roman Reigns needs that more than Lesnar does. And it's it's intriguing what they're gonna do after that. Are they gonna are they gonna end the brand split? Hot take. I kind of like the brand split. I kind of like just having two separate rosters. Uh, the Survivor Series shit, which uh, is seems to be the reason why a lot of people don't like the brand split. Uh, that shit can go. They can just revert back to the old Survivor Series where it was just teams of, you know, feuding people or whatever, you know. But regardless, like, are they going to unify the titles and the brand split? I don't want them to do that. Or, like, is Roman going to have to drop all the titles? Like, I don't, like... It's interesting, but what, why this sort of annoys me, though, is because it's the obvious... You take away a possible main event, or main event caliber match. Um, I don't... Uh, uh, Bobby Lashley, I heard, was genuinely injured, so they wrote him out of the match. So I guess the, your next best option was Brock Lesnar, but... Fuck, you have Seth Rollins in that match, you have... Uh, AJ Styles in that match. You could have put that title on Riddle. You know, Austin... Fuck, Austin Theory, you could have, like, swerved the fans. Uh, although, he was he's not ready for, for uh, oh, the WWE Champion. But, uh, but you, like, you know what I mean? Like, you there, there were many things I could have done to make... Also, the other thing is, I just... Why am I saying that a title versus title match is not the only thing they can do to make this a huge match? Well, simple. You, this is not the first time they are fighting. Many people are making jokes about how this is like the fucking millionth time these two are meeting in the ring. Yet. So you're gonna be advertising this match as a huge match, you know, huge match, the biggest thing of all time, and you're not gonna add a fucking stipulation? Are you fucking kidding me? And no, no, the winner takes all is not a fucking stipulation. Like, fucking a false count anywhere match, or no, this met honestly, this feud, the, the this, like, this current feud between the two would be perfect for Hell in a Cell. And you, you, and WWE, if you're watching this, which I know you're not, I know you're not watching this, but if the, on the off chance you are, if one of your creative members are watching this, you, I, I can see with Edge versus Rollins at, uh, at Crown Jewel, you can, uh, you know that, uh, you can book a Hell in a Cell match for a reason other than it being that time of year again, but... So, like, why not make this, like, a Hell in a Cell match? Or at least, like, a no DQ or something. Trust me. Like, I I, I find the title versus title stipulation, stipulation, uh, you know, interesting, intriguing. Want to know what's going to happen after the fact, really, more than anything else. But... That's the, like, sacrificing an entire, like, main event division 
is the best option here. When you can make this a stipulation, like honestly, I don't think I don't think this does it. I don't know. I think like many people are still sort of like against this match because it's just been it's just been I don't know. I guess it's just people are tired of it. I if if you make this like a hell in a cell or at least like a no DQ or have some sort of like stipulation like loser leaves or whatever which they're not gonna do but like you know some sort of stipulation like that like I think people would kind of be into it now. It's like the obvious. This is what WWE does. It's like the obvious shit that would be like the perfect op option. They don't do it. They don't do it. I don't. I don't understand them. As for a few other things, um, Cody Rhodes is apparently going to come back to WWE. I. I think he's going up against Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. Everyone else on the Raw roster, I can't really think of anyone on SmackDown he can go up against. But everyone else on the Raw, uh, on, on the Raw side of things, like, uh, they all have feuds going into, or potential feuds, except for Seth Rollins, he ain't really doing anything. So, I think he should go up against Cody Rhodes, and that'll be a damn good match. And then Stone Cold Steve Austin's apparently coming out of retirement, um, to face Kevin Owens. That's never a fucking sentence I thought I'd ever say, but... Yeah, what do you guys think about all of that? Um... Moving on to the next thing. Doctor Strange! Hey, this movie comes out three days after my birthday. Uh, I'm excited for that. It's gonna be a nice birthday thing. Um... And... Recently with, like, Spider-Man No Way Home, it's like... So... We are doing multiverse. With Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield showing up. Now there are a fuck ton of other people showing up in this one. Like, in the trailer, we already got... What's his face? Patrick Stewart as Professor X. In the fucking... In the trailer! Dude. Like, they didn't want to show Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in the trailers for Spider-Man No Way Home. They straight up, they didn't show him, but his... Patrick Stewart's voice in... Doctor Strange, in the Doctor Strange trailer, it's it, it just, it's just there, it's there. I, I, it's it's in the fucking trailer. So if they are gonna, if they're just gonna like confirm to you that Professor X is in this movie, I want to know. What characters are keeping from us? There are many rumored characters like Toby and Andrew showing up again to Tom Cruise as Iron Man. It was like either he was supposed to play Iron Man before it was Robert Downey Jr. or he was supposed to play Iron Man in a different Iron Man movie. I can't quite remember. I would love to see that. There's rumors of uh, John Krasinski's... Uh, Reed Richards, I would love to see that. I, I, he would be perfect as Reed Richards. You know, I, there are many possible cameos. There, there is a, uh, um, there is on the poster. You can clearly see Captain Carter's shield on it. So Captain Carter has been confirmed. Pretty much, like you don't just have that in the fucking poster. Come on, um. So, there's that, and many people see Deadpool in a shard of glass. I don't... I mean, after it's been pointed out, and after I really looked at it enough, now I see it, but I didn't before. And it seemed like a stretch. Like, it needed to be explained to me that that was Deadpool. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't really think that is Deadpool. I think that it just looks like Deadpool, you know, while you see a cloud and it looks like a, I don't know, a fucking gun, you know? Uh, I think that's sort of what it is. But, I don't know. It could be, Deadpool could be in this movie. I've heard that Ryan Reynolds denied that he's in this movie. But, 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 um, what was I gonna say? Fuck. Uh, no. 
uh, not so much Tobey Maguire, but Andrew Garfield denied the shit out of him being in No Way Home. He was... Every interview he was in, he's like, fuck you, shut up, I'm not in this movie, fuck you, and he ended up being in the movie. Um, he's a good liar, you know. He didn't convince anyone, but he seemed... It seemed like he was believing the lies he was telling, you know. That's a good liar. <laughs> Excuse me. I have a stuffy nose, all of a sudden. Uh, in case you couldn't notice, but yeah, but I the thing is I don't really think I don't think Deadpool's gonna be in this movie. I because I wouldn't I, I don't think he would maybe he can like be in as a cameo, uh, but I don't really think he will be in the movie because I don't think a character like him would really match the tone of this movie. This is supposed to be like a horror movie almost. You know, they got Sam Raimi, like I think it's nearly a shoo in. <laughs> They bring back Sam Raimi. I think it's nearly a shoo-in a shoo that they bring, uh, that they bring Toby and Andrew in this, you know? And there are rumors that Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield are going to show up in, uh, in Secret Invasion. So they, so No Way Home ain't the last time we're seeing them, which is, which is crazy to think about. Holy shit. And there are other rumors that my favorite superhero of all time, Wolverine, will be showing up in this. I don't... I don't know. I don't know if that would happen. I don't know if this is where you show... Where you bring Wolverine in. And also, I, I don't know if... Uh, Kevin Feige is ready to introduce all these X-Men characters. Like, Professor X is, I guess, one of them. That's one, but, like, if we have Professor X, Deadpool, Wolverine, fucking Cyclops, a Gambit, fucking Storm, uh, I don't know, uh, the Juggernaut, I was trying to think of a stupid one, okay, like how there's Kite Man in DC, I was trying to think of an X-Men like that, but I can't think of any of them, so fuck, uh, but I don't think we're gonna see, like, like, in... Professor X is one. But I don't think we're going to see that much more uh, than him. I could be wrong, though. Could be wrong. You never know. Um, yeah, uh, so this would be my second most anticipated movie of the year. Um, followed by... Oh, no, no, no. Following The Batman, which I... That's my most anticipated movie of the year. That movie looks great. And holy fuck, it comes out in a little over a week. It comes out next Friday. Shit. So, yeah. Anyways, that was uh, that on Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, a bunch of speculation and stuff going on about that. Uh, we're going to move on now to... This was going to be a review I was just going to make. But I was like, eh, there's a lot of videos. A lot of videos I want to do. And a lot of videos I... I don't fucking know what my upload schedule's been lately. So I've just been throwing out shit whenever I want. But... The Cuphead Show. The Cuphead Show just uh, premiered on Netflix. And here, I'll review it. I'll review it. Why not? Now, I want to be honest. I expected nothing. I didn't know why they were making a Cuphead Show... You know, especially now, like, they announced this, I remember they announced this pretty soon after the game came out, but, you know, I'm not gonna say it's completely irrelevant now, especially with the Delicious Last Course coming later this year, but, I mean, Cuphead isn't, like, as much of a hot topic as it was when it came out. Like, I remember Cuphead was very popular when it came out, and rightfully so, it's a great game, um, but... It's 2022 now, and they're now making... They come out with the Cuphead, like, kids show. And I wasn't quite sure why. And then I watched the trailer that dropped, like, a, a month ago. And it actually looked good. So, I was like, okay, I'll watch. I was going to watch anyways, because I love Cuphead. And I usually, when it's available to me, I'll, I'll, I'll watch anything, vi any movie or show that's video, video game related. <laughs> Excuse me. So I watched Cuphead, the Cuphead show, and I like it. I'm not gonna, it's nothing crazy or anything. I'm sure kids will adore the show because it, 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 it has a bit of a, like, SpongeBob sort of, like, 
Disney cartoon feel to it. I know SpongeBob isn't Disney, but you know what I mean. And I kind of like that, you know. Um, I don't really know. The thing is about Cuphead, though, and making a Cuphead show like this. I don't know how else they could have made a Cuphead show, but like. Uh, oh, how to say that? Uh, Cuphead isn't really a game kids can play. I mean, don't. it's not like a fucking. It's not rated M. But I mean, it's. How do I... Cuphead is a tough game. Cuphead is hard as balls, right? And so that being said, it's not really appealing to the average kid that would... That this show is marketed towards, if you know what I mean. Uh, so that's what I was trying to say. Um, but I think if I showed my like little cousins this show, I think they would love it. Um... <laughs> I, I found it genuinely funny a couple times. I chuckled a little bit. Um, I just want to say, I like this show a lot. Uh, I, I, I like this show a lot more than I thought I did. Um, I, I, I didn't love it. It's nothing fucking crazy or anything. Oh my god, it's a Cuphead show. It's not like Arcane where it's just like, holy shit, I don't think I have anything to complain about. You know, it's not like that. It's a fine little show. Uh... That's another th reason why I want to talk about it on here. I don't think I have much to say on it, really, uh, for an entire... The, uh, the opening theme, the intro, I think is really cool. The, like, come with me. I think that is... Uh, I just got in my head of a little bit, and I, I, I liked it. It was cool. Um, I like the, 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 the chemistry between Cuphead and Mugman. I just, like... I think they are uh, likable protagonists to see, to watch on this uh, show. They're, they're like Spongebob and Patrick, except, like, uh, Spongebob, Cuphead is Spongebob, and Mugman is Patrick, but Patrick is also Spongebob, who is Cuphead. What I mean is, they are, it's not, it's the Cuphead show, but Cuphead's not, like, it's a show where we follow both Cuphead and Mugman, you know? Be like, oh, we want to go to a uh, an amusement park. They both go to an, an amusement park. We want to go uh, on searching this mountain. They both go searching a mountain, you know. Uh, and it's fun. Uh, Miss Chalice, who is like the new character in the Delicious Last Course, um, she was all over. She was in a lot of the marketing, from what I remember. <laughs> Even I think she was even in the intro, um, but she only I, I'm just letting you know she only appears in the last episode. And the way the season ends is very weird, very fucking weird. I did not expect that, and I don't know if it's a good thing or not. If I'm gonna be honest, but yeah, um, I enjoyed the show. I didn't think I liked the show as much as I did. I Again, I didn't love it. It's nothing crazy. If you like Cuphead, I think you should watch it, definitely. But yeah, I enjoyed it. So uh, the Cuphead show, I'm going to give a 7 out of 10. Yeah, it was, it was good. So yeah. Moving on uh, will be the uh, Discord topic. <laughs> now, if you want to send in a Discord topic... Um, you join the MeCast Discord server down below, and there is a channel for Discord for podcast podcast topics, where you go into it and I post a poll with, and there I post reactions to the certain topics I list, and you select the reaction to the corresponding option, and that determines what I talk about. You following? Okay. Um, I will admit, this is the poll from last month's cancelled episode. Uh, and fucking, it, there's a tie, but I'm just gonna pick the one that I wanna do more, so. Uh, your three options were, should all games have an easy mode? What 2022 games, if any, are getting delayed? And what games next year should be del- why did I- Huh? 
That's weird. It looks like I put the same thing twice, but worded it differently. Fuck you. I'm doing the first one. Should all games have an easy mode? So, should all games have an easy mode? I also picked this because Elden Ring comes out soon. And, hey, that, that kind of started the uh, topic of, like, uh, games having an easy mode. All games having an easy... You know. Uh, so, I think... Short answer, no. Not all games should have an easy mode because a game should be pushing you, you know. A game should definitely push you. I talked about Sifu earlier th this episode. That game did not... I feel like if that game had an easy mode where you were, like, you know, just zooming by it, I think, I think part, of the, part of the reason that that game is so good is would be gone, you know, uh, I, cause I, I think, like, what makes Sifu a good game is, you know, the, like, the main, you know, uh, concept of Sifu is every time you die, you get older, but if, if you are, if you are playing on an easy mode, you're not gonna die as much, so, like, you don't, how do I say? Like you're not gonna die as much, so that that concept doesn't really become proper utilized, properly, proper, blah, properly utilized. If you uh, have this easy mode, if you know what I mean. And there are other games like the Soulsborne. Look at Elden Ring that's coming out soon. Uh, I've heard uh, from people that have played uh, like the beta that this is actually an easier version of the. Uh, um, fucking thing. Shit. No, this is, uh, the, an easier version of the Soulsborne games, but still, I don't expect Elden Ring to be a, a, a walk in the park. I don't think, as someone who, uh, will, who got fucking, who was extremely tested by Metroid Dread, okay? I don't think this game should have an easy mode. I'm completely, I bought this I, I bought, I pre-ordered Elden Ring for $60. Knowing that I'll probably never beat it. I don't think it should have an easy mode. I am just very, like, I think that speaks volumes for just how, like, intriguing and exciting Elden Ring is. This open world Soulsborne game with a story written by George R. R. Martin. I think that in and of itself, I think that speaks to just how interesting that is, but but still, I mean, I don't, I'm, I paid full price for this, pre-ordered it, which I usually do with games, but like, I pre-ordered this way in advance, so, and I, I don't think I'm going to beat it. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm going to try to beat it. Don't get me wrong, I'm going to try, I, I had to pause the recording, so I don't know if I got cut off there, but don't get me wrong, I'm going to try to beat it, but at a certain point... I am gonna have to move on. That's just how things go. That's that's what happened with Sifu. I was playing that, and then King of Fighters dropped. I'm like, I'll play this. I'm gonna get back to Sifu though. But uh, I don't think I'm gonna beat Elden Ring. All like, so the thing is, a game like Elden Ring, a game like Sifu, other games like Cuphead, as I kind of talked about earlier. Celeste, another game known for being notoriously difficult. I don't know why I said notor brutally difficult. Those games should not have an easy mode because. The main thing about them is that they are difficult. But then you get... I. Then you get to the fact that I'm bad at video games. I'm not that good at video games, alright? I'm, I'm just gonna... Uh, I'm gonna just let you in, okay? I'm not that good at video games. So a game like Metroid Dread, which requires precision and, you know, strategies... And I really enjoyed Metroid Dread because it really... That game really pushed me. Yeah, to me, it was very difficult. And it does kind of bother me, though, that how how they fucking, you know, now they add in a rookie mode, which I sound like a fucking dweeb, but I probably could have used that. I just want to, I don't know. Um, hell, I got fucking, uh, I, I, I was pushed to my limits to tell you how... Now, I'm not that good of a gamer. I'm not good at games. Tales of Arise really tested me. That game tested the fuck out of me. I 
at times I actually fucking hated the game. It's a great game. Great game. Um, but at times I actually just wanted to like shove the controller into my mouth and choke on it. Um, cause it was the boss, it was the boss fights particularly as well. They just like whooped my fucking ass. Because those required precision. I, and th that did have a difficulty setting. It did have an easy mode. So I'm just bad at it. Uh, but what I'm saying is... Not all games should have a diffi uh, 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 like an easy mode. Um, bada boom. Yeah. There. Some games definitely should. But other games should not. So yeah. Uh... One last topic, it's, I saved the best one for last. I was going to talk about this first, because it's the thing I'm most excited for. But, uh, I saved it for last. Um, Capcom had been hyping up a big new announcement for a while. And it was like, oh no, is it Street Fighter VI? Is it Resident Evil Village DLC? Is it Resident Evil 4 Remake that was announced two years ago. We still know nothing about it. Also, I don't think it's necessary. It was Street Fighter 6. Let's fucking go! I'm sorry, that was probably very cringy for you, but... Dude, I'm a fan of Street Fighter, okay? I'm a fan of fighting games. You know, I love Smash. If you know me for anything, you probably know me for Smash. But, 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 but... I'm a fan of all fighting games. Um, not all of them. Some of them I'm not too familiar with. More recent fighting games that have come out, like Guilty Gear and King of Fighters, I'm not too familiar with the franchises that they came from. But if I'm going to be... I have an itch on my foot. Okay. But if I'm going to be any fan of fighting games, i got to be a fan of Street Fighter. Street Fighter is awesome. Every st Street Fighter game, except for the first one, and Vanilla 5 is a banger. Um, that's not true. Fuck, that's not true. But, most of them are bangers. Uh, Street Fighter 2, I think every version of that game is a fucking banger. Street Fighter 3, I think every version of that game is a fucking banger. Street Fighter 4, uh, there was a ver- there was one, like, port of, like, I think Ultra? I don't remember, but that, that was shit. But other than that, every version of that game is a fucking banger. And I, every update for Street Fighter 5 is a banger. Well, Street Fighter 6 was announced, and we didn't get much. All we got was a CG trailer of Ryu and Luke, who was, I think, confirmed, was added to Street Fighter 5 very late. Um, and I, I find it interesting how they are having a... How they're revealing Ryu and Luke. How they're revealing Luke before everyone else. That's interesting. Uh, him of all characters. But whatever. Um, I'm hyped. We didn't see any gameplay footage. I don't think they're ready to show it. But weird. I think I heard rumors that this game was originally supposed to be a launch title for the PS5. How they have nothing to show for it. Unless either that game rumor is bullshit, or there is some real issues if they still don't have anything to show for it. But, regardless, I'm excited. There's some, there's been some backlash. First of all, a lot of people were upset that uh, we got this instead of Resident Evil Village DLC. Uh, that was announced. That was like the best announcement at Capcom's uh, E3. Right? So, um... So, I... Look, I really like Resident Evil Village. But, look. Capcom are going to hype an announcement. And they have to pick between DLC or a brand new game. They're going to pick the brand new game, especially if it's Street Fighter 6. It's not like, you know, Nintendo with Smash. If they have to pick between... I was going to say Breath of the Wild 2, but that... They're going to pick Breath of the Wild 2 between, over Smash DLC. But let's say um, they had to pick between... Ah, uh, fuck. 
let's do like if it was like Pokemon Legends Arceus, if they had to pick when they revealed that, if they had to pick between that or a new Smash character. If it was a character like Sora or something, say he wasn't the last one, uh, they would have picked Sora. They would have picked the Smash DLC. But this isn't like that. Um, I don't know why I went on that. Maybe it was just an excuse for me to bring up Smash. I don't know. Uh, the fact of the matter is, people that are uh, upset about it, they have a right to be upset. If you're harassing Capcom over this, though, I've heard some people doing that. If you're harassing Capcom over this, grow the fuck up. Alright, you fucking flat earther. Alright, anyways, uh, there is something that I think has been blown a little out of proportion, but I think is a little pathetic, is the logo for this game. Uh, you look at the logo for every other Street Fighter game, they all look stylized and flashy, and, you know, they give you the feel of Street Fighter, you know? It's like, oh yeah, let's go play some Street Fighter. And this one, this one's literally like, I saw a post about this. Capcom stole this. This is literally like an Adobe logo. They added some curves and edges and added a 6 to it. It's being blown a little out of proportion. People are... People seem a little too angry about it. Like, they're like, I'm not going to support Capcom. I'm not buying this game because of this logo. But at the same time, Capcom, that's fucking pathetic. First of all, this looks nothing like... Uh, any of the other uh, Street Fighter logos, it, it, it just, it looks lazy, because it is lazy, they stole, I think the fact that they stole it from, like, they uh, essentially stole it from, uh, from Adobe, is quite pathetic, but I don't think, if I'm going to be, I don't think this is the final logo, you know, I'm talking about a logo, <laughs> I'm speculating over a fucking logo, but I don't think it's, the final logo, you know. Uh, it, you know what it looks like? It, it looks the logo looks like something you'd see on like the uh, the PS5 startup screen. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, I just want to say that. The, I I could totally see like with that logo, just the PS5 like you know, black particle effect background, just behind it. Oh, um. Yeah, I'm still hyped for Street Fighter 6. I hope. Capcom, you must learn your lesson. Don't launch this game like you did with Street Fighter 5. <coughs> oh, fuck. I think, I think that hurt my throat. Capcom. Just like I know, so, I to, know totally someone from WWE is watching this. Someone from Capcom is totally watching this. Capcom. Look. You launch Street Fighter V all buggy and glitchy with no content, without fucking arcade mode, missing a lot of characters that should have absolutely been there. You did the exact same thing with Marvel Infinite. Don't do that again with this. Learn your lesson. It's been a, it's been a much longer gap, you know. There's a one year gap between Street Fighter V and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Maybe you're like, oh, what was that? Oh, wait, first let me... Wait, I can't hear you. Let me just uh, put out Marvel Infinite. Okay, it's out now. Okay, what was that? Oh, that's not how we were supposed to do it. Okay, but <laughs> uh, it's been a much longer wait. Learn your lesson. Do not launch this game without, you know, launch this game with a fucking arcade mode. That was fucking stupid. Launch this game with an arcade mode. Launch this game with a nice character roster to justify extra DLC. Like Street Fighter V now, after all the DLC, Street Fighter V, that roster is fucking loaded. Holy shit. There are so many characters that were, like, not even mentioned in the, in the base game. You know, they added so many new characters. So many, or so, so many, like, like, I don't know what I'm saying. But so many characters that were, like, mainstays for Street Fighter. They added in Blanca, you know, E. Honda. They added in Sakura. All characters that should have fucking been there. So, like, they even added, like, Strider. 
You know, I for, I forget what his actual name was, but he was basically Strider. It was like a guest character almost. So that was crazy. Um, sorry, but I it just Capcom, come on. If you fucking if you fuck this one up, I'm gonna be mad. I will be mad. I'll, I'll be mad. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Street Fighter Six. But that wasn't before we wrap this episode up. There is another thing that Capcom announced. It is called the Capcom Fighting Collection. I think it's Capcom Fighting. I thought it was Collection, but I have a. F I something's telling me it's not. I'm looking that up as we speak. Capcom Fighting. All right, so I have the games up here, and guys, th this is a fucking crazy uh, lineup. I think it's a gr gr ugh, great lineup of games. Uh, some games I never thought we'd see re-released ever. Uh, it's very heavy on Darkstalkers. There are more, there's more Darkstalkers than there is uh, fucking... Uh, I was going to say games. That wouldn't make much sense. Um, there's more Darkstalkers than there is Street Fighter. Um, we got Darkstalkers, uh, Darkstalkers, uh, or Night Warriors, Darkstalkers Revenge, we got Vampire Savior, Vampire Hunter 2, I don't know what happened to Vampire Hunter 1, uh, that's, that's not on here, and there's Vampire Savior 2, and then we get into, uh, two games I never thought we'd ever see, uh, Red Earth, which was gonna be like a, uh, that was, I, a while ago, when I did my oddly specific top 10 list week, volume 2, gotta say that fast, uh, I did a top 10 list of forgotten Capcom fighting games. That game was gonna be on the list. And then, uh, I moved, I removed it for something else. This game's never been on a, uh, a home console. It's been an arcade exclusive. Uh, so yeah, it's good to see Red Earth coming back. Um, and then, uh, Cyberbots, which... Like, aside from Al Jin, I don't remember the, what his name was, but he was in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Aside from him being in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I know nothing about this game. Uh, so, it's... I have played it once, though. I I played on, like, an emulator, I believe. But I don't, I don't know anything. I don't remember playing it and playing much of it. So, it's great to see that coming back. And then we get... Uh, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, which is a great game, by the way. It's, like, a good mix between puzzle games and fighting games, and it's a nice crossover between Darkstalkers and Street Fighter. Got Hyper Street Fighter 2 and Super Gem Fighter 2. Or, no, what? Super Gem Fighter Mini, mini Mix, which I did not know existed. I did not know that game existed. Uh, I didn't know. I did not know that there was a uh, Street Fighter, basically Street Fighter, uh, Darkstalkers, Chibi crossover. You know. So yeah, I am excited. This comes out June like twenty fourth, and I am stoked. I, I if this is Digital Eclipse making it as well, who made the Capcom. Uh, Legacy Collection and the Street Fighter Anniversary Collection. Like, that's another plus. So, yeah, uh, that's Street Fighter Six, and that is the Capcom Fighting Collection. Both awesome announcements. Cannot wait uh, to play the collection and cannot wait to play... Cannot wait to find more and then play Street Fighter Six. So, that will do it for this episode of DPX Talks for about an hour. Um, this was a good one. Uh, I... Oh, I kind of miss doing this, actually, now that I took a bit of a break and I'm back. But, yeah, uh, that'll do it for this episode. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, go over to my SoundCloud uh, and sub and follow the podcast on there. Uh, we're, we're building up some momentum, all right? We uh, hit a roadblock, but we're, we're back. Um, uh, got the premium thing. Can uh, do unlimited episodes. So yeah, we're back. Um, be sure to drop a follow. If you're on SoundCloud, go over to my YouTube, DPX Solo, in the description down below, and subscribe. And yeah, uh, I'll be back next month with another episode of DPX Talks for about an hour. I'll see you guys. <laughs>